The accusative case abbreviated ACC of a noun is the grammatical case used to mark the direct object of a transitive verb. The same case is used in many languages for the objects of some or all prepositions. It is a noun that is having something done to it, usually used together such as in Latin with the nominative case. For example, they in English is nominative. Them is accusative. The sentence, they like them, shows the nominative case and accusative case working in conjunction using the same base word. The syntactic functions of the accusative consist of designating the immediate object of an action, the intended result, the goal of a motion, and the extent of an action. The accusative case existed in Proto Indo European and is present in some Indo European languages, including Latin, Sanskrit, Greek, German, Icelandic, Bulgarian, Polish, Czech, Serbo Croatian, Slovak, Romanian, Russian, Ukrainian, in the Uralic languages, in Altaic languages, and in Semitic languages, such as Classical Arabic. Finnic languages, such as Finnish and Estonian, have two cases to mark objects, the accusative and the partitive case. In morphosyntactic alignment terms, both perform the accusative function, but the accusative object is telic, while the partitive is not. Modern English, which almost entirely lacks declension in its nouns, does not have an explicitly marked accusative case even in the pronouns. Such forms as whom, them, and her derive rather from the old Germanic dative forms, of which the m and r endings are characteristic. This conflation of the old accusative, dative, and after prepositions genitive cases is the oblique case. Most modern English grammarians no longer use the Latin accusative, dative model, though they tend to use the terms objective for oblique, subjective for nominative, and possessive for genitive see declension in English. Hein, a true accusative masculine third person singular pronoun, is attested in some Northern English dialects as late as the 19th century. Etymology The English name, accusative case, is an anglicization of the Latin accusativus, casus", which was translated from ancient Greek atheotique, tosis atheotique. Tosis". The Greek term can mean either inflection for something caused or for an accusation. The intended meaning was likely the first, which would be translated as Latin causativus or effectivus, but the Latin term was a translation of the second. Compare Russian vinitelnij vinitelni from vinit vinit to blame. Topic: <laughs> Description In the sentence he sees the woman, he is the subject of the sentence, while in the woman sees him, him is the object. In English the two uses are distinguished by different forms of the pronoun, he, him. If, however, instead of a pronoun, we use a noun, we make no such distinction in the form of the word. Thus, we use the same word, man, in both the man sees the woman and the woman sees the man. In many languages, however, different forms of the word are used not only for pronouns, but for nouns too. For example, in Latin the man sees the woman. Vir feminum videt, while the woman sees the man Femina virum videt. For man, Latin uses vir for the subject, and virum for the object. Likewise, in the same pair of sentences, we have femina for a subject and feminum for object. The form used for the direct object, him, virum, feminum, is known as the accusative case, while the form used for the subject, he, vir, femina, is known as the nominative case. Just as with pronouns and nouns, many inflected languages also make distinctions between cases in their adjectives and for languages that have them articles. Thus in German, the giant, as the subject of a sentence may be expressed as der Ries, nominative case. As the object of a verb, this becomes den Riesen, the accusative. Examples <laughs> 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 Indo-European languages Latin 
In Latin, nouns, adjectives, or pronouns in the accusative case accusativus can be used as direct object to indicate duration of time. E.g., multos annos, for many years, ducentos annos, for two hundred years. This is known as the accusative of time. Compare the ablative of time, which was used for most points in time except in classical Latin. For dates of the form anti diem n cal, non, id, which followed Greek in taking the accusative to indicate direction towards which. The prepositions ad to or in into onto would be used, e.g., ad rivum, to the stream or in silvum, into the forest. Some words, specifically those that take the locative, may be used in the accusative without a preposition. These words are the names of cities, small islands, or towns, and humus, domus, bellum, militia, focus, and rus, ruris. E.g. domum, homewards, romum, to Rome, with no preposition needed. This is known as the accusative of place to which, and is equivalent to the lative case found in some other languages. As the subject of an indirect statement, e.g. dixit me fuse savum, he said that I had been cruel. In later Latin works, such as the Vulgate, such a construction is replaced by quad and a regularly structured sentence, having the subject in the nominative, e.g., dixit quad ego furam sivus, with case specific prepositions such as per, through, ad, to, toward, and trans, across, in exclamations, such as me miserum, wretched me. Spoken by Circe to Ulysses in Ovid's Remedium Amoris, note that this is feminine, the masculine form would be me for the accusative endings, see Latin declension. <laughs> <laughs> Latin prepositions Some Latin prepositions take a noun in the accusative. A few prepositions may take either an accusative or an ablative, in which case the accusative indicates motion, and the ablative indicates no motion. E.g. ablative in casa, in the cottage, accusative in casum, into the cottage. This aid memoir was taught in schools when Latin was on the curriculum, anti, apud, ad, adversus, circum, circa, citra, cis, contra, inter, erga, extra, infra, intra, iuxta, ob, pines, pone, post, and proter, prope, propter, per, secundum, supra, versus, ultra, trans. Ad super, subter, sub, and in, when motion tis, not state they mean. Asterisk asterisk or try, asterisk asterisk and unto these if motion be intended, let in, sub, super, subter be appended. <laughs> German German uses the accusative to mark direct objects and objects of certain prepositions, or adverbs relating to time. The accusative is only marked for masculine articles, pronouns, adjectives, and weak nouns. Topic: <laughs> German articles. The masculine forms for German articles, e.g., der, the, ein, a, and mein, my, etc., change in the accusative case. They always end in n. Feminine, neuter, and plural articles do not change in the accusative. For example, Hund dog is a masculine ein, der word, so the article changes when used in the accusative case. Ich habe einen Hund, lit, I have a dog, in this sentence, a dog is in the accusative case as it is the second idea the object of the sentence. <laughs> German pronouns most German pronouns also change in the accusative case, with the exception of the third-person forms except the masculine, which are psi in the nominative and accusative forms, and the second-person formal form, which is psi in both forms. <laughs> German prepositions The accusative case is also used after particular German prepositions. These include bis until, dirch through, for, for, gegen against, ona without, um around, by, after which the accusative case is always used, and an at, auf on, entlang along, hinter behind, in in into, neben beside, next to, uber over, across, unter under below, vor in front of, zwischen among, between, which can govern either the accusative or the dative. 
The latter prepositions take the accusative when motion or action is specified being done into, onto the space, but take the dative when location is specified being done in, on that space. These prepositions are also used in conjunction with certain verbs, in which case it is the verb in question which governs whether the accusative or dative should be used. Some two-way prepositions can be contracted with DOS. <laughs> German adjectives Adjective endings also change in the accusative case. Another factor that determines the endings of adjectives is whether the adjective is being used after a definite article the, after an indefinite article a, an, or without any article before the adjective many green apples. <laughs> <laughs> German adverbial use In German, the accusative case is also used for some adverbial expressions, mostly temporal ones, as in Diesen Abend bleib ich daheim. This evening I'm staying at home, where Diesen Abend is marked as accusative, although not a direct object. Topic: <inaudible> Russian. In Russian, the accusative vinitelnij is used not only to indicate the direct object of an action, but also to indicate the destination or goal of motion. It is also used with some prepositions. The prepositions v and na can both take the accusative in situations where they indicate the goal of emotion. In the masculine, Russian also distinguishes between animate and inanimate nouns with regard to the accusative, only the animates carry a marker in this case. Over time, Russian has almost lost the real pi accusative case, since only singular nouns ending in a have a distinct form. Other words use the forms of the genitive case or the nominative case in place of the accusative, depending on their animacy. Armenian While the Armenian dialects both have a de facto accusative case, Eastern Armenian uses an accusative marker for transitive verbs example Gurk Gurk – book nominative Usuchik Usuchik – teacher nominative Aram Verkrek Gurk – Arame Verturek Gurk Aram took the book Aram Siram Eir Usuchin Arame Siram Eir Usuchin Aram loves his teacher. Topic: <inaudible> Greek. In both ancient and modern Greek, nouns, adjectives, verb participles, articles and pronouns are used in the accusative case when they indicate a direct object or if they are preceded by a preposition. There is a wide variety of accusative markers depending on gender, number and declension. Like in Latin, all neuter names yield the same form in both the nominative and the accusative case in Ancient Greek. In its modern successor, this rule also extends to most feminine nouns, except these ending to os. Example: He was also calumniating Socrates. In Ancient Greek, Deech by a de kai ton Socraten. Deech by a de kai ton Socraten. In modern Greek, Deech by a kai ton Socrate. Deech val k ton Socrate. Topic: Constructed languages. Topic: <inaudible> Esperanto. Esperanto grammar involves only two cases: a nominative and an accusative. The accusative is formed by the addition of n to the nominative form, and is the case used for direct objects. Example: nabo, boy, naben, boy, acc. Other case functions, including dative functions, are achieved with prepositions, all of which normally take the nominative case. Direction of motion can be expressed either by the accusative case, or by the preposition al to with the nominative. Edo In Edo the n suffix is optional, as subject-verb-object order is assumed when it is not present. Note that this is sometimes done in Esperanto, especially by beginners, but it is considered incorrect while in Edo it is the norm. Uralic languages Finnish 
According to traditional Finnish grammars, the accusative is the case of a total object, while the case of a partial object is the partitive. The negative forms of verbs always take the partial object, whereas in positive sentences it depends on the nature of the action, the main rule being that incomplete or indefinite action requires a partial object. The accusative singular is identical either to the nominative often called nominative accusative or the genitive genitive accusative. In plural, only nominative accusative exists. The active verb forms usually require the total object in the genitive accusative and passive forms take the nominative accusative. The only exceptions to this rule are imperative first and second persons, and the rarely used third infinitive in instructive, which take the total object in nominative accusative. The personal pronouns and the personal interrogative pronoun kuka, ken have a special accusative form ending in t which is used in place of both nominative accusative and genitive accusative. For example, the accusative form of han he, she, is hanit, and the accusative form of kuka or ken is kanet. The major new Finnish grammar, isosuomen kiliopi, breaks with the traditional classification by limiting the accusative case to the special case of the personal pronouns and kuka, ken. The new grammar considers other total objects as being in the nominative or genitive case. Hungarian The accusative case in Hungarian applies to nouns, pronouns, even to adjectives and numerals when either of them stands alone in the sense of direct object. Accusative is formed by the suffix t. In many cases, t is preceded by a suffix initial vowel, primarily based on specific vowel harmony, resulting in et, ot, or ot. The rules are complex, also involve consonants, and have exceptions. Thus, kerte, garden, kiket, blue, hatat, six, polkot, shelf, kodot, fog. In some words, a low vowel a or e appears instead of the expected harmonic vowel, e.g. fallet, fallet. Wall, Nyalkat, Nyalkat, eight, Konivet, Konivot, book. In fewer cases, the root of the word is also affected. Word endings a or e will, even if they are the endings of a preceding suffix, change to a and a, respectively, before t, e.g., fa, tree, to fat. The long vowel of a one-syllable word may get shortened, e.g., er, lord, to urit, but ber, bor, to bert. If a word has more than one syllable and the last syllable ends in a consonant, the vowel of the last syllable may drop. E.g., quorum fingernail to cormot. But, quorum my circle to quoramit. Notably, the first person and second person personal pronouns have quite unique accusative forms indeed, as indicated in the table, in the singular case the ending et is rather optional, even considered archaic. Semitic languages An ending for accusative case existed in Proto-Semitic, Akkadian, and Ugaritic, but today it is preserved only in literary Arabic and Ge'ez. Akkadian Nominative, a willem, a, the man Accusative, apakita willem, I trust a, the man Classical Arabic In Arabic, the accusative case also the subjunctive mood is called a nasbi, nsbi and a word in the accusative case also a verb in the subjunctive is called al-mansub, al-msub both from the verb nasaba, and is set up. The accusative is used in 51 places, but mainly to mark the object of a verb and to form adverbs and prepositions. Nominative, rajulan, a man. Ar Rajulu, the man. Accusative, as alu Rajulan, I ask a man, as alu ar Rajula, I ask the man. See also Nota accusativi, Accusative absolute, Morphosyntactic alignment Notes External links Russian accusative, 1, 2, 3, 4 
German accusative case grammar lesson covering the accusative case in the German language Arabic case endings <laughs>